Welcome to the Short Rod Show. You're talking with Ben. And you got Brett. Thanks, everybody, for joining us again uh, for episode four of season three. We're yes. cranking the episodes out every week. Still talking gear. Yep, we're still uh, still talking through some of the stuff we use to get out on on any kind of ice and catch fish. And So far, no ice yet here. Nope, not <laughs> even close. We're still uh, pretty warm today. You saw a few folks, you know... The YouTube game. If you if you if you watch any fishing on YouTube, there's a few folks that they really made a push to get out early, but I think all that ice has melted back off again. Yeah, a couple guys they were they I got mean, on really pushing it. They got on two inches and <laughs> yep caught one bluegill and got out of there. Yep. Yeah. So I mean that's kind of typical for this time of year, like we keep talking, but we yep. wanted to get you guys on board with learning a little bit more about the kind of gear that makes ice fishing possible and yep. Um, you know, really our message for everybody um, is that you don't have to have the latest and greatest, coolest gear to get out and no. have a good time and catch fish. And no. that's definitely not what we're about here. Definitely not. Um, so, you know, kind of our jig episode last last week was talking through that, you know, making homemade jigs, buying, you know, whatever kind of jigs you want. Um, you hear Henry in the back background <laughs> making some noise. He's cheering us on. Yep. Um, but also that goes, goes the same way with spoons. I mean, you can make a spoon out of anything. A uh, bottle cap. I bottle see those cap, quite a bit. Uh, you know, beer bottle cap. Yep. Twist but, it around. So that's going to be the topic today. Yep. All that stuff. We're so, going deep into the spoons. Pretty cool. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed our, our jigging episode, which, uh, of course, as we're recording it, we don't really know how that's doing yet, but yeah, it just came out today. Yeah. <laughs> we're recording on a Sunday here. But yeah, if you enjoyed that. Let us know. Post some comments on Facebook. Ask ask some questions. Yeah, well, man, we've had great yeah listener interaction this past week, past two weeks really. Uh, it's been a ton of fun. It's like it's like every day I look down at my phone while I'm working and I'm just like, oh yeah, message, 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 message. Yep, chatting back and forth. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's been pretty cool. So yeah, we're still uh, interacting with everybody, and we have jobs that we go to every day that we're we're busy at, but we get back to everybody that messages us. At we'll some try point to. And, it, yep. It's starting to get a little overwhelming because we're at we're we're in so many different places, mm-hmm. so many different podcasting platforms. YouTube, you can email us, Facebook, Instagram. Yep. There's a lot of places, and it's it's coming from yeah. all over. We're the place. still kind of learning how to split that up too, yep. so yep. we can make it a little well, more it, manageable. It it took me a minute to realize that when I message somebody back, especially on Facebook, is it it doesn't say that he do, they don't know that it's from me. Mm-hmm. They know that it's from the Short Rod Show. Yep. And so then sometimes you will message and then I'll message and then it's it's just to them it's just all sort short rod show. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's pretty cool to to interact with everybody. But yeah, keep it coming. Like I said, we enjoyed talking with fans. Um, you know, we've gotten a few things in the mail so far, pretty cool yeah. to test out this I'm year. I'm excited. Um from, from our fans, so we really appreciate we'll that. We'll start talking those through once we get, get a little ice. Yeah, and, and I mean it for those of you that are just tuning into our podcast, normally we're we're doing a mix of recording while we're out on the ice and in studio recording so this is yep. you know not necessarily typical for a season we'll get out we have a mobile uh recording set up that will record out on the ice while we're fishing yep and actually get some live action of catching fish talking tactics you know whatever's on our mind um which makes it a pretty cool at the end cool of this experience. episode ben we'll have to call out when we think we'll have first ice here and yeah morning. we need to do that that's uh Man, that's going to be tough to predict. But oh gosh, I hope we're going to be on a roll now. That's just going to go downhill yeah. slide. Next right ten day forecast winter. doesn't look great. Man, I so might still be out in the boat then. We'll get into that here. Yep. Cool. So that's all coming up next on the Short Rod Show. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today we're talking spoons on the Short Rod Show. So this kind of goes along with our topic of gear. Yep. We're uh, we're laying out everything we're using this season. Kind of. Brett and I are prepping everything, getting ready to get out on the ice here in Iowa. Um, of course, the weather hasn't been that great, but it's it's going down. We'll get on ice eventually here. It's still typical. It's only November. Yep, so we're n- nothing to be concerned of there. But, yeah, we're scratching the itch today talking about ice fishing spoons. So spoons. Last week we were talking jigs. Jigs yep. are kind of my specialty. That's my preferred way of fishing. Um, but, you know, Brett's a big spoon guy, and that's, you know, I still have a pretty good a- – decent array of spoons so something different it's interesting yeah the are two contrasting styles of fishing uh i think that's what really has helped make fishing together that's what really helps make us uh successful um is dialing it in both presentation and location wise yep yep definitely so yeah brett you took a little trip to fleet farm today yeah so i went to fleet farm so last last week uh i kind of had the 
the made the equivalent of when you when you go to Fleet Farm and you're looking at a big wall of jigs, you know what's going on. Uh, how do you pick what you're looking at? Well, so this morning I ran to Fleet Farm just to get an idea of what kind of what you're looking at for spoons. Um, I mean, I know how I have the ones that I like to use and that I go to, but yep. um, I just kind of wanted to look at and see how daunting it might be for someone new or not really going in. Cause I mean, you're talking three, four, sometimes $5 for a spoon and that's one spoon in one color yep. in one weight. And once you start considering, you know, the different colors and the different weights and the different styles of spoons, I mean, that just extrapolates so much that how do you know oh, yeah. what to buy, when to buy and how much, what do you need? Yep. Um, so I went there and I counted 27 different spoons that Fleet Farm sells that are, I consider them to be completely different, either brand or profile or action. Mm -hmm. So they either have a different brand and a different name, different names, that sort of deal. Uh, that doesn't include different colors of yeah. individual spoons. That doesn't include different sizes of individual Patterns, spoons. Any of that. that doesn't include spoons that they just add dropper chains to. That doesn't, I mean, that was just 27 different types of spoons. Yep. And so, I mean, I could easily see how that gets pretty overwhelming. Yeah, and and it, there's that's not to say you need every type of spoon. No, but it's just kind of lays it out there for yep. the variety of you can just go crazy. Yep. I mean, there to me, there's different categories of spoons, mm -hmm. and then so each company is going to come up and have their own, you know, horse mm -hmm. in that race for those categories yep. of spoons. So then that's what blows up the the numbers that you're looking at, and they're all just a little bit different, but in reality. There are they are, uh, a lot of them will still do the same thing. Yep. Um, I mean, you got some real dense, heavy spoons uh, that I would say just drop straight down, and really the the action you're getting is out of the hook, kind of tailing dancing down there as you yep. jig it. Um, it's not really shooting off to the side any. It's not really fluttering. Um, they just kind of go straight up and down. Um, then you'll get into other kinds of spoons that'll flutter a little bit. They'll be more of a like a tin material. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll be flatter, yep, wider. Lighter. Um, and then as those are dropping down, they'll kind of flutter as they go down into the, into the water. Um, and then the third kind is then you get some with wings and that sort of stuff and they'll shoot off to the side and they'll come back in. And then you also get some with rattles and stuff and yep. that'll rattle around. Um, there's also jointed versions of all of that. Uh, that makes it yeah, even more like fun. Like you said, the variety adding a dropper chain to it, or yep. you can even add a dropper chain to to your spoons to kind of tune them a little bit yep. as well. Or they got those little treble hooks with those, those red drops of resin in the middle that glow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get the fish yeah, target. about those. There's just all sorts. Then of you things. have your, like, your Northland glow jigs that you stick the little Oh, that little glow, glow stick into. And uh, several other ones have, yeah. several other brands have those options also yeah. now. And it's then you cool. have glow jigs, or glow spoons that also glow. And yep. it's just, it's an unbelievable, it's overwhelming. Yeah, and I mean, every year companies will come out with a special edition yeah you know, different action different colors you know, different yep. uh, yeah yeah you know, what do you what do you think about that i mean are you a believer in in getting the latest and greatest spoon each year and and having success with it or no. sticking with keep the old standbys just uh cranking? so i have my confidence ones you know the confident color confident style of spoon and then you, yeah you'll branch off a little bit but I don't know, really in the spoon world, I haven't really seen a lot that comes along that really changes the spoon. Yep. Um, like I said, you got those three, those couple of categories and every company has a, ra a horse in those categories. Uh, now they might be a little bit different. They might have a little different profile. Some might be a little skinnier. Some might be a little wider. Some might have a little different bend in them, make them flop a little bit differently. Some of them, you like this, the demon tongue. I mean, yeah, the demon tongue. Those ones got a little cut out in them and then there's a split, split ring that, attaches the cutout part and i gotta uh, look at mine now if yeah so it all changes a little bit me flipping what do you got oh yeah so so give me a, a rundown of time. what kind of spoons you got in your box there ben. oh my gosh don't even just, just quick just quick i was gonna say that we could be here all day so um kind of some some different ones i mean I, we have your standard ones um of course the dinner bell demon tongue that brett was talking about yep I haven't had much luck with no, that. No, I haven't really. Yeah. Um, we we were really pumped to get it at the St. Paul show last year. So what what kind of spoon is that? I mean, it, it's kind of a flutter type spoon. Yep. It'll it'll fall down, uh, but it has kind of a, an extra spoon in the middle on a swivel. Yep. That is supposed to ding it's relatively thin and it's concave. Yeah, ding, ding along to catch against some water. the against the the bait too. Yeah. So. No 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 uh, blades on it or anything. Nope. Um, nope. Um, otherwise, that's been a big thing I've noticed this year. 
A lot of a lot of companies are just putting blades on. Yeah, just add now. a set of flash to it going yeah, down. Set mm-hmm. of blades on it. That's kind of a yep. fad these days. Um, kind of the the main ones. I mean, like a rattling flyer. We talk about those a lot. Those, that's the time. just the staple. Yeah, yeah. Pink rattling flyer. Pretty classic In kind of design. Sixteenth ounce. Yep. That is. That's breast that's my go-to bait. bait. <laughs> now, I mean, I'll go different colors, but rattling flyer. Yep. Well, one thing I've, I learned, and I learned that last year. And I didn't realize was the rattle and flyer has an eye on it that glows. I never knew. I did not know that that eye glowed. Yep. And you you look at this one that's like kind of the, what color would you call that? Like a perch color? Yeah, it's like a metallic perch yep. is what I'd call it. You get that eye that glows on there. You get the action, the fluttering action as it comes down. So yeah, it both flutters and it shoots off to the side. A bit. And it has a rattle in it too, don't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It makes a hell rattle of a Rattle and flyer. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's got a little bit of everything on her. Yeah, that's so that's like that's it. good, and you can tip it with a lot of stuff. Yep. Um, the pinhead minnow. Um, I have. I, I do like that. Have that as well. The jointed pinhead, and of course, have the the Clear Lake bait and tackle exclusive color, the yellow yellow bass. The yellow bass, and it's got a little blade, little gold blade on it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I mean, they're a little spendy. That's I like that. five what five fifty. I six don't bucks remember for what they were, but yeah, they aren't for, they aren't free. Uh, but I do like I do like the action of that. Yeah. Jointed pinhead minnow. I think they did a good job. I don't really like the regular pinhead minnow that doesn't have the joint to it because um, that's just kind of the bang the bottom sort of yep. jig or sort of spoon, yep. um, but I do like this one. Yep. Um, otherwise, for other baits, I do have a, um, I wouldn't call that a spoon necessarily, but um, the Rockies Twin Ring. This Ooh, is kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting bait. So this would be, uh, this is a home built kind of bait from a gentleman in Waterloo. Um, you can get them through Hank's Bait and Tackle. Uh, it's the only place I really noticed that mm-hmm. I've seen them. But, um, yeah, basically it's got two separate rings on it. Uh, it's kind of a flutter type. He hand paints them. It's got a, a nice it's got silver blade on it. Si- the, the blade is pretty big Yeah, compared to the to the hook yep. on that. I, I would think. I so, would... yeah, you get it tuned right, um, you know, and just fluttering down. And it's got this blade spinning off to the side as it's fluttering. Yep. Pretty cool crappie bait. So, so to me, the value of that one, especially that, is with the blade on it, is that you don't have to really give it a lot of action. No. You can just no, barely you don't tap. Overwork it barely either. tap when you have a fish coming yep. in. the The beauty of those blades are, you can just barely tap that rod blank, and I mean, like you hold it as steady as you can, and you're just tapping it with your finger, and it makes that that blade move, but nothing else is moving. So it just gives it a little bit more tantalizing action when. Fish are a little uh, hesitant to take a real. They're not real yep. aggressive, so they're not coming after a real. Yeah, heavy definitely. I mean, and bait. and I have a lot of different sizes of that, just because I've kind of specialized on that. But yep. Um. Yeah. Those. Those are pretty cool baits. Um. But yeah, like like you said, you have you have real heavy baits, the real heavy blades that, I mean, you're ripping for what yep. walleyes and and big panfish with them. Ah, I'd just say you're you're ripping it for an aggressive bite. I wouldn't mm-hmm. say that I'm targeting a specific fish for it. It's just if it's an aggressive bite and I need to go fast. Yep, fishing that's what I'm that for. yes. That now, rocky. I want to go back to that rocky yeah, twin sure. quick. That has a particular, a surprisingly small hook on it that it comes with. Tiny. Um, for what it is, like that blade is almost as big as that hook. Yeah, and this would kind of be your small. So why do size. they call it a twin ring? There, it's got two split rings. Yeah, so it goes from the spoon, split ring. Yep. The blade is con- is attached to the first split ring. Yep. But then it's attached to another split ring that attaches to the hook. Yep. And it's got a little pink kind of plastic. It gives a little bit more distance between that spoon and the hook. Ring in between there. Um, yep. And you'll see some folks that modify it like that. Particularly, personally, I like to do um, take that split ring off. You know, if I'm if I'm fishing with a lot of minnow heads, and I know that day mm-hmm. or wherever I'm going, I'm going to be fishing with minnow heads, is I'll take the split ring off and I'll put a, a snap ring oh, on sure. there, like yep. a snap, like a trolling uh, snap. Uh, replace that so then I could just pop that hook off and put the minnow head straight on the shaft of the treble hook, snap it back yep. on, and then that minnow head stays on there for yeah it'll last for a, a long, long time. time. Yeah, yep. you don't have to go through so many minnows at that point. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yep. So yeah, usually here, you know, I kind of take my spoon game off of Brett honestly because I never, I didn't have hardly any spoons until I met you. Yep. <laughs> and I'd, I'd never really fished them. I was I was always a jig guy. For me, spoon jig. spoons is all about the profile. Um. Some with color. Uh, I don't really get hung up with color as much on the spoons. It's all about size of the spoon and the action of that spoon. Um, and you can tell right away if the fish are into it or not. Yes. Um, yep. 
Now, now, are you tying those directly onto your line? Or are you using the, yeah. a snap? No, I usually tie them directly on. So you're not doing a quick change. I used to run the the, the snap on there, uh, but anymore, no, I I just tie directly onto everything anymore. Mm-hmm. I do one one bait that I one spoon that I used to run a lot was the frosty frosty spoon. Frosty spoon, yes, I have. I used to run that a lot, and uh, I've kind of gotten out of it, and. Uh, the uh, rattling flyer is kind of taking over on it a little bit, but I used to. I have had a lot of success with that frog, especially That's, if I need to get light, because they make a real light, teeny tiny, like one thirty second ounce uh, okay. frosty spoon. That that's a frosty. Yep, that's a oh, that's okay. a Magnum frosty. But the yeah, Magnum frosty. Here's a here's the little one I'm talking about. Is this little this little dangler right here? Oh yeah, and yeah, he's got he's, nice. he's double colored. He's got gold and he's got some sparkles on one side, and I think it also has a glow eye on it. Um, but I do like those jigs. Yep. That are you got, you know, the classic buckshot spoons. And um, I'm surprised you haven't mentioned anything about your VMC uh, Tingler or Tumbler spoons yet. The Tumbler and the Tingler. I, yeah. So I need to re- the Tumbler and the Tingler. I need to restock because <laughs> yeah, I only have one Tumbler spoon right here. So yeah, just one, and it's huge. Yep. And it's orange. I don't know why I bought a bright orange and white. Yep. I mean, beast. So the Tumbler is an interesting kind of spoon because it. What I like about it is, is it has a tight drop to it when it, mm-hmm. tum- when it yeah, literally it's, it's tumbling down yep, the water yep. and it has real tight to it where the tingler is really like fluttery as it comes yep. down um so i prefer the tingler spoon to be honest with you yeah i don't i don't know i think i got on a kick a long time ago because it's a pretty old bait but it glows on the back side so mm-hmm. you know you can you can throw that down at night trying to stir up a bite there yep what's what's that one i don't know what I'm, oh that's a cast master yeah but it's a vmc though but yeah, uh, similar it's the, style. It's the VMC wannabe. So or it's the Castmaster wannabe. What would be the action on something like that? It's that's just a flat your, side. Oh, it'll shoot one. off to the side. Like and if you just kind of a ramp if you pull, so if you jig it up, if you so on your upstroke, and then you just let it slack line out as you go down, it'll shoot off to the side. Oh, okay, cool. It'll catch water on that flat side and shoot out. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of an extra one in my jig box here. Yep. So to bring that around a little bit for you, uh, so when you're staring at the pile of Spoons, are you looking at a fleet farm? In your mind, put it into categories of what kind of action you want. Mm-hmm. Because all those all those companies are going to sell similar action type baits. I mean, and then run with those. Yeah. I have not found a spoon that I'm just like, oh, this is junk. Oh, I hate this. Oh, the hooks suck. Oh, I, I mean, to me, as far as I could tell, every jig that I have, in, every spoon that I have in my box here, they have the same hooks. Well, except for the VMC, because VMC sells their own hooks. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, they're very similar. And you can buy those separately, too, yep. and rehook your hook your spoons. Yep, yep. If they, I, I wouldn't bother sharpening those little trebles. Ah, they're good. tough now, but yeah, them. just put them on there, yeah. Yep, yep. So that, that's always something good, because normally I'll get caught up using the same bait over and over again. Yep. And not realize that your hook is just getting yep. beat up. And as far, no, I, I have put plastics on my spoons before. I put like a. I've, I've made sure that the plastic's sitting horizontal, so the bait's almost making like an L. Yep. Um, and I have had some success with that, uh, but typically it's wax worms or minnow heads I'm putting on that tip in that spoon with. Yep. Almost always. Yep. Yeah, something with some scent to it, something that's a little juicy, something mm-hmm. that you know has an extra flash, that minnow eye looking at them. Yep. You know, the... hot tip for you guys if you're listening in. I know I mentioned it last season, as we're getting closer to the season here. Uh, and if it's anything like open water bait, everything's going to be in short supply and real pain in the ass to get a hold of. Yes. If you can right now, go to your local shop, go buy the 250 count of wax worms and put them in your basement windowsill and they will live the entire year. Mm-hmm. They will last you until March. <laughs> I mean, they'll survive until March. I was going to say, you, you're the king of just keeping wax worms alive. Keeping them rolling. And that's all I do. And they live forever. I mean, it's, they're, they're it's starting to make thing. cocoons at the end of the season. Sure. It's a temperature. Temperature and thing. moisture. Yep. Yep. I thought it was like the, the basement sun that brightens them up. Nah, nah. But, but you want it in the windowsill because then it gets cool enough. And then you get that condensation that goes back and forth a little bit. Mm-hmm. And boom, they'll live. Mine are, yeah, mine are making cocoons by the end Did of the season. you buy some when you're No, I haven't bought them yet. No, I'm not going to worry about it until you at least have a little bit of crusty ice. <laughs> I want to see you keep some alive from November until March. I'll try to keep them all year next time. 
this and time, it, this batch. If I have any left over, I'll try to keep. Them if all we year. don't go through two hundred and fifty in a year, that's going to be sad. Yeah, you're usually scraping up <laughs> the teeny tiny ones. Yeah, at the end of the year. I mean, we usually pound I had to buy through. a couple fifty packs last year. Yeah, we pound through a lot of, of bait. Yeah, yep. It's just handy having it. And it then is. if yep. you can keep it alive and you yep. keep it in your bait pocket, you just grab it and you're out of there. Yep, super handy. Yep. But so yeah, are you tipping? Are you tipping your spoons with wax worms then too? Yeah, almost. That's all ninety percent of what's getting put on there because you got to keep minnows alive. Yep. So I'm only buying minnows to take with me if I know specifically this is going to be. I yep. want to fish with minnows today. Uh, otherwise, yeah. If I need, if the wax worms aren't working, I'll try a plastic on there or something mm-hmm. like that sometimes. But uh, for the most part, yeah, it's almost always wax worms. I do have that spare fridge down in the basement. Actually, I have the one out in the garage. I could use to keep a little, little some minnows going out there. Oh, to keep them alive? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That Maybe. could be a game changer this year. Yeah. You could give Just her a shot. Buy some in bulk and try them out. Yeah. Yeah. We got anything else you want to mention on spoons, Ben? Anything particular that we've missed? Um, one thing for me, for sure, on spoons that you, can, you cannot overlook, though, is I'm a color guy. I know you said you don't yeah. do color as much. I, I run like a very limited set of colors. Yep. And maybe that's just in my head thinking, okay, these colors are where it's at. Or maybe they don't even matter. But, um, you know, I'll try and match the color to the lake that I'm fishing. Yep. So if I'm in stained water, you know, I'm using brighter colors. When I'm in clear water, I'm using more natural colors. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely something to color. But I wouldn't just, if I'm looking to buy spoons, I wouldn't just go out and buy every color. No, you don't. Uh, I mean, there's color. definitely, no. there's definitely, I mean, color does help at the end of the day, but. I mean, I have other progressions to get through first before I'm worried mm-hmm. about color. Um, location yep. would be my number one progression. Number two would be size and profile. Number three would then be color. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. Yep, and you've already Pretty put much. in a hell of a lot of fishing to get to that point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it takes a little bit of time to get there anyway yep. before you're starting to switch colors around. So, yeah. Um, one thing we haven't really talked about, and I don't really have any of these, is uh, uh, the perch and walleye talker. Perch talker. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're basically, yep. a, I mean, it's a spoon. I'd still consider it a spoon. But it's like you got your wire shaft, and they just put some glass beads and stuff on there. Yep. And they just it's just there to make a bunch of noise down mm-hmm. there. And, I mean, I've never really fished with them. I don't have any, but um, I do know folks use them. Yep. Yeah, and I, I don't think, I think we've only scratched the surface on what we have versus what oh, yeah. is out there. Oh, I mean. Not even including what's at Fleet Farm. When I'm sitting here talking, I'm looking, I'm sitting in front of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different spoons Mm -hmm. that's it um and i would say primarily uh obviously rattling flyer i've got a buckshot i've got a forage minnow tumbler or tingler spoon uh demon tongue pinhead minnow um and that's it frosty the frosty those are it and some a few different sizes and some different colors i mean i got some blues purples uh perch colors Uh, i got some pinks um that sort of deal. And gold, I guess the, yeah, the, the yellow bass in, color. Pinheads in the yellow bass gold. Yep. But yeah. It's pretty cool. So it's not a huge selection, but it sure, certainly is effective. Yep. Yep. That's all you need to get out there. And I mean, really, if you were, if you were to just pick one spoon. Yep. And let's say you're new to, new to fish, ice fishing, and you want to just have a spoon with you, you got five bucks in your pocket. What's it going to be? Rather than flyer. Rather than flyer all day long, huh? <laughs> What color? What color are you getting? So they make a color. I think I don't think I have it in front of me. It must be tied on somewhere from last season I'm on sure. my, one of my it's, rods. It's on a schoolie right now. Um, it's like a pink with like some blue metallic-y color in it. Um, it's not a real dark pink. It's kind of a lighter pink. Uh, that one has been by far the, my best color. Yeah. Uh, I really like that. And then on, and they're not completely covered in that color. It's they just it's just one side and the other side is just a blank white usually. Um, so I think there is some advantage to having those con- contrasting colors also to get fish's attention. Yep. Um, but then, yeah, you also have that rattle in there. Um, one thing I do like about spoons a lot is, so you do, the, you rip them and you can really bring in fish from a ways away. Um, especially early season, like we'd mentioned in earlier episodes. Uh, I'm not moving around a whole lot if I'm on really early thin yes. ice. Yep. Um, I can use the spoons and the noise rattle profile and the movement and everything to really bring fish into me. But then you can really slow down a spoon um, to where I had mentioned before, where you're basically trying to hold that rod as steady as you possibly can. You're just tapping the blank. 
Yep. You're just tapping it. And all that's doing is just adding action to your hook. And that, that hook's just barely dinking around down there. And then if you've got a wax worm yep. or a minnow head on there and you got like some little tentacles or their guts or something hanging off and then it's just barely, it's still, it's always yep. adding action. It just looks alive then. Um, yeah. You don't, you can, you can fish it. So you can fish a single spoon in so many different ways that that's what I really like about it. Mm-hmm. Um, once you figure out the profile that you're looking for. Yep. Um, I mean, you can fish them, fish them aggressively, but then, yeah, you can still really finesse them also. Yep. Yeah, that's what's, that's what's cool about spoons. Like what you said, just you can fish them fast, you can fish them slow, um, you can dead stick them. Drop them in the yep. mud. Yep. Uh, that's one thing pound I like mud. to do, too, is if I have problems. If I'm not getting the fish in that I want to see, um, just start pounding the bottom a couple, two or three mm-hmm. times and then bring it up a couple inches just so you're... The goal is, and it, I mean, you obviously can't see unless you have a camera down there. The goal for me anyways is pound bottom, and then I raise it up a couple inches to where I, I guess in my head, I think I'm just above that cloud that I just created. Yep. Um, so the fish can see all the that commotion down there, and then they can see my jig just above it. Yep. Still in, clearly through the water. Um, I don't really want to be down in the cloud because then it's still difficult for them to see what's going on in there. But, yep. um, And typically that's six inches. Uh I don't know. That's what I do. I don't know. I don't know Three how cranks off to, the bottom. Yeah, I just kind that's of pick it up at. off there a little bit and <laughs> run with it. Yep. Three cranks. That's all you need. Yep. yep. Right above the cloud of dust and mud and everything down yep. there. But, yeah, and having a camera in that case would be helpful to be able to see. If you're really struggling, there's fish around, they're just not interested. Yep. You know, maybe, like I said, pounding the bottom. Give you a clue what's mud, going on. See how they react to it with your with your spoon above there. Yep. Better switch over to a jig. That's yeah, or yeah. And then that's the next thing. But, but, but running jigs. Really what we do when we fish is I'll generally start with a jig. You'll generally start with a spoon. Sometimes it's a jig bite and you'll switch to a jig. Yep. Sometimes it's a spoon bite and I'll switch to a spoon. And, uh, and we've already got those tied on with our multiple rods. Yep. So then you don't have to worry about, oh, it's cold out. I don't want to tie this line. Yep. I got two pound test and I can't see it. And, you know, yada, 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 yep. whatever excuse you want to make up. Yeah, and you get into some of the bigger spoons, and you're going to need to be running a, a stiffer rod. If you're running a yep. ultra ultra light spring bobber tip yep. rod, then it may be completely overloaded on a spoon. I mean, and I'm, I'm typically running spoons between the eighth would be the heaviest yeah, that I've got. Big and I'm usually down to, primarily I'm in the 16th, 32nd ounce mm-hmm. size. 16th is probably my, my most... Um, and then, yeah, I got a few that'll get into the eights and I got some that'll go down to 30 second. Um, and yeah, that, that's plenty. The school can still handle those weights. Yep. But yeah, when you get into those bigger spoons, then you need a little heavier rod. Yeah. Yep. Then that's getting pretty serious. So cool. Yeah. That's pretty good dive into spoons about at least what we know about them. Yeah. I mean, it's a classic bait. You, that's probably one of the first yep. artificial yep. bait someone has made is a, is a spoon. Oh yeah. For like fishing. I said, I've seen it where people will punch a hole, drill a hole in the top of a bottle cap and the bottom of a bottle cap, put split rings on both sides, tie to this, tie their line to one split, split ring and put a treble hook on the other. Boom. Yep. Just it just has some erratic action yep. flipping up and down in the water column. Yep. And fish want to come over and see what's going on. Yep. Works out yep. well. Yep. Pretty cool. What else you got on spoons? I think that's about all I got to talk about them. Yeah. Just fish them and catch fish with them. We're not spoon experts by any means, but we want to hear hear yeah. from you guys too. If you have a, a spoon we didn't mention, something cool. I'm I'm a fan of like the small local guys oh, yeah. fine tuning, like make casting their own spoons out of I don't know, something at their dinner table. But it's impossible know? for us to bring up all yeah. those. No, it's, I just like amounts. to see what else is out there and what other people That's are one thing with, I do so. like about ice fishing also is the innovation. The individual innovation. Yeah. Um where you get in some other parts of fishing and it's pretty much kind of your big company sort of thing where yep. ice fishing there's still a lot of room for for a guy to kind of make his own stuff oh yeah and that's that's really what i miss about the ice show this year is just seeing the saint paul show just seeing all the innovation around there yep where you don't get to see that i mean you can't just do a google search for no innovative ice products and, and find all the little uh, sometimes those dudes are hard items. to find yep. on the internet yep yep and a lot of them show up every year, and they'll have something different every year. Yep. It's, it's and one, cool I guess one part it. that we might not get into in other types of baits would be more your hard body type baits. Um, if we need to fill more time on this podcast, I don't know what time we're at. But. We could do a little more, yeah. We'll talk <laughs> some hard bodies. Um, like your jigging wraps, those yep. come to mind. Uh, your slab wraps, uh, ripping wraps. Yep. Uh, 
And that's just because those are, I don't really fish many of them. I don't fish a lot of them either, but they're they're they kind of blew up in the in the past. Uh, Z Viber, I think, is another one of those. Folks run, but like uh, you know, Rapalus made a lot of ice ice fishing specific hard body baits recently. Yep, uh, where they didn't before. I mean, they didn't have a. No, nope. this is a ultralight rip and wrap uh, three, tiny n- number three. I mean, that's small. Yep, but I don't, never really caught anything. I don't really fish much with them. <laughs> no. I see a lot on YouTube and TV of guys just getting on crazy bites with them. You know, just super aggressive fish. Yeah. And they'll just, they would bite on anything at that point. Yeah, I think that's what they're running into. And then they, yep. they find that bite and then they just will, oh yeah, the rip and rap got them all going. Well, in reality, they would have been yeah, anything. You could have thrown a pop top yeah. with, with a hook on there and been good to go. Dangled your finger down there and they would and have been And that Z-Viber, I do like it a lot, but I've also never really caught much on it. No. I don't know. It's got a single blade. I don't know if I really like that single hook on the bottom. That, that's what makes me wonder about that one. I, I wish it was a treble hook, at least. See, and I don't know if it's like a balance thing, weight thing. Well, just get, you can get a small treble. Get a small treble. But, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a European Man, it thing. looks nice. Yeah, I guess. The shape of it. it yeah. It sits there and kind of rocks. I mean, there's a lot in there that sells the, the around. Fish, that sells the fisherman sort of deal. That's why you got a thousand baits in front of oh, you. Yeah. That's, that's got me good. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, but yeah, hard hard side baits. You can use your open water baits. What's that case you got in front of you there that you keep them all in? Because I do like the organization you got going there. This this I just got last year, so I really like it too. Um, it is a Rapala hard body case of some kind. Does it have what brand? What kind it is there? No, or is it just the model number. No, um, but it's a, it's got four sides. It's got yes. both your yep. in, inner sides and then an outer side. Yep. And so this is just strictly my hard, you know, my spoons, my hard body baits. Yep. Um, but I wanted something compact, kind of like the jig box you yep. can throw in your pocket, be covered. You yep. know, I don't, I used to have everything kind of in one central location and I didn't carry things with me. You yep. know, it was more like, okay, I'll go back to the shelter if I need to retie or something. Now yep. I keep everything kind of in my suit in my pockets ready so do you like so i I noticed on that one so on mine i just keep them in like i've got i just use a jig box Mm -hmm. and then i just hook the trebles in the in the spot where you'd hook Mm -hmm. regular jigs at where i see in that one it's got actual compartments this this is made um that's run jigs too yeah so like this this has slots in it too to run jigs yeah but I, i might just cut this foam out of here um yeah it gets kind of tight on that side Yep. Um, with spoons but then on the other side but that helps keep the spoons kind of yeah in place from rattling around i kind of keep smaller spoons over here and then this kind of cracks on some bigger stuff yep i see that. these glass plastic doors but it also is nice to have those set up that way because otherwise where would you store those baits i don't know but th- this is the best i've found so far i like that baits i like and the storage like you got in there 15 bucks i think that yeah and it's like not, what maybe three by five yeah three by five yep throw in dimension bigger pocket um and have everything that you need yeah so and it holds a lot nice fit a lot in there sweet which is good so yeah i only use three sides of it but hollow that out and make it yeah make it work a little better so ben i forgot to look did we have any listener questions for this week we didn't have anything specific nothing specific nothing that would be just a quick quick answer question no yeah nope nothing uh Nothing real specific there. There's a couple that floated in. Uh, actually, we could talk about the one that we just got. Oh, yeah, about... Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Place to fish. Um, yeah, place to fish. So, uh, Lindell is talking to us here on Facebook. Not sure where he's from, but um, he says, Over the last four years, I've been talking, uh, taking my son, who's 14 this year, ice fishing. Uh, they've gone twice to Lake of the Woods and twice to Devil's Lake. Uh, The only time that they can go is the week of Christmas on a five-day trip and fishing for three. Do we have any recommendations? They're not taking their portable. They're looking for someone with a permanent shack resort. Man. uh, Yeah, I guess I don't have any recommendations on the shack part stuff or the permanent resort stuff, but I'm I'm sure some of our uh, listeners are listening in if they're running uh, hard side shacks up in that area, Lake of the Woods, Devil's Lake, anywhere in between. Sounds like he's willing to travel. Yep around but over christmas are there any lakes you think that come to your mind that would be besides those two maybe for them to go to man and i don't pay attention to real hard side focused lakes. well i don't care about the hard know? side stuff i'm just talking lakes man i mean i would think that time of year like malax would be pretty cool yeah 
That that's what jumped out at me at first. I mean, because obviously they're going towards the big name mm-hmm. places. Yeah, big uh, legs. Malax, Leech yep. would probably be a good one to go to. I mean, by Christmas, are they pulling hard sides out? I have there? no idea. I don't know. I don't not know. Down not down here. Yeah, it might not be far enough north. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, Manitoba. I've never really, I've never really been on trips like that. So yep. I don't know. Yep. Uh, I've never even been in. I've never stayed on a, in a hard side side of nope, the track before. So I'd like to sometime. Maybe we need to broaden the horizon cool. a little bit. I guess. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think of Wisconsin. Maybe Chippewa Flowage. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I guess I'm not. Yeah. Sorry, we're not. Uh, sorry, Lindell. <laughs> we're not great help on that. No, we're not big hard side guys. But um, yeah, a, a trip like that over Christmas that sounds like something we'd do. That does sound like a lot of fun. Just sneak away. Yeah. <laughs> Hop in a hard side for four or five days. Yep. I don't know how I feel about hard sides though either because I feel Your like mobility is yeah mobility none. is is really. Yeah, it's crimping our style. But you like to hope that those guys that are running their hard sided shacks are keeping you keeping them over fish yep. at some point throughout yep. the day. There's fish coming through there. That, or if you're driving out with a pickup, you got your otter in the back of that. You're running around yep. during the day, and then set up some rattle reel, rattle reels at night. Yep, you're already on location. Yep, yep. Now that'd be cool. Yeah, and then just have a good old time. Get four or five guys in there, have having fun. So cool. Anything else, Brett? Before we wrap it up this week. Nothing really on my on my uh, waiting on ice. Thought. Yeah, I think while we're waiting on ice, we'll just continue with some gear conversation. Yep. Uh, just work our way up the up the rod. Now that we're done with the baits, maybe we'll work up line. To yeah, we've been wanting to do to a reels. fishing line episode, and that's whew, there's yep. a lot to it. Yeah, that'll be sweet. That'll, that'll be, be awesome. a good one. Yep. Um, one quick shout out: if you guys haven't seen the series from Jay Siemens on ice fishing, he's got a ten part ice fishing series on everything you need to know. Yeah, he's he, he's kind of doing what we're doing now, but he's going pretty pretty in depth on it. It's a uh, visual thing rather than a conversation. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. But yeah, starting off learning how to ice fish, all the gear you, you could ever ask for. Yep, learning about. So um, check him out. He does really good videos. I like his garage setup too. Well, yeah, when he set up that, that was freaking sweet. Yep, he he basically designed his garage just for filming. So it's got super well, that's bright his job. lights. And, you know, the walls are all organized, and I just envy that. <laughs> Everything's in a, in a case somewhere. Yep. It's all just, yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. That's the opposite so, of your garage. It is. Yep, <laughs> mine's a disaster right now. Man, I had all intentions of getting that organized, but there it sits. Man, you got all year. Yep. You got the rest of your life to do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cool. All right, well, thanks for joining us, guys, on The Short Ride Show.